Hi, Stefan. So Google has, I don't even know how many thousands of employees. Does Google have a roughly equal number of employees proportional to the Trump supporters in America? So close to half of Americans voted for Trump are half of Google employees in America pro-Trump. Well, if not, why not? You know, why not? If half the population was black and there were almost no black employees at Google, everybody would be going insane. Now, your political beliefs are to some degree genetic. Just to some degree, who you are, what you want, small market, free market. That's one of the reasons why political dialogue doesn't really work as well as we like, because the only way to overcome genetic tendencies is with a ruthless uh, commitment to reason and evidence, to overcome your natural hostility towards other political viewpoints. And so it is a form of genetic discrimination to keep Trump supporters out of your company. Uh, it is a form of genetic discrimination to keep Trump supporters out of your company. So then the question is, why in America are they having these meetings where they universally cry and wail and rend their garments and, and shred their hairdos over Trump getting into power? It's because, obviously, either A, they have no Trump supporters, which means they're weeding out people based upon political biases, which would strike me as kind of illegal, or B, they have Trump supporters who are all too terrified to speak up against the leftist cult that has taken over Google. Or C... It's the same kind of reason why more women don't get into STEM fields. Different mindsets are best suited for specific types of jobs. As you have suggested here, there is a genetic component here. It has been proven that liberals and conservatives have different distinct thinking patterns. If you think one way, you will be or most likely eventually be a conservative, and if you think the other way, you'll most likely be or eventually be illiberal. When you're conservative, you typically find solace in things that are well established. When you're liberal, you typically find solace in things that are new. It's why many liberals are neophiles and why many conservatives are neophobes. Neo meaning new. Very few people are completely neophobic or completely neophilic but there is definitely polarization. It is rather typical for someone who is a neophile to get in fields that are on the cusp of technological change. People who aren't as much into new things aren't as likely to get into those fields. I mean, sure, they exist, but it's not a typical thing, and those that are conservative that are in those fields are not typical conservatives. Of course, just the phrase typical conservative can set people off, just as much as someone saying typical liberal can set someone off, so. But this also isn't to say that there aren't a number of neophobes that are in IT. Once something has been well established, um, it's no longer really that new. People who are neophobes can run some of the backbone parts of a company, of, of an IT department of a company, especially some of the things that don't change that much, but their jobs are of the utmost importance. They never have to deal with cultural issues. It's pretty much all tech, and this same principle can apply to a lot of jobs that a lot of neophobes tend to prefer. So, yes, Stefan, I'd say that most people at Google are liberal, and it's not because of some conspiracy. It's not something where they're, they're weeding out conservative people. If you work for Google, you probably like new ideas. And yes, many new ideas suck, just as many traditional ideas suck. In my 30 years of experience in online forums, starting with BBS message boards in the 1980s, I've seen something over and over again. And I've talked about this before, but maybe not in the same way. Liberals tend to want to use rules as a method of moderating their opponents. And conservatives tend to want to use creative insults as a method of moderating their opponents. Now, in the short term, both methods can work equally well in shutting up or taming the other side. But only one method demands civility. On a more long-term basis, creative insults are not a sustainable model, and neither is having too many draconian rules. 
Liberals tend to be blissfully unaware of when they're breaking the, some of the same rules, but in reverse, some of these rules that they get after others for breaking, and there are always arguments about whether words like racist are insults or whether they're just descriptions. To those that argue that Google's algorithms are pro-liberal, you may have a point, and it's because of some of these double standards that you find sometimes from liberals, where they can do something that essentially breaks some of these rules, and the other side can't. Xenophobia, anti-Muslim sentiment, racism against minorities, sexism against women, and anti-LGBT sentiments are likely to be negatively targeted by Google's algorithms. On the other hand, xenomania, anti-Christian sentiment, racism against white people, sexism against men, and anti-straight sentiments are likely to be either ignored by Google's algorithms, or even put in some sort of positive search, uh, whatever you'd call it, you know, not, certainly not ranked down. So what can be done about that? Well, if we see an increase in xenophobia, it will be equally countered with xenomania. And honestly, I don't even know if it's something people have control over. I think it may just be a natural reactionary human phenomenon. But you know, maybe, just maybe, having such an uncivilized, xenophobic, polarizing figure as the head of our country has something to do with it.